Hey guys, Josh here with the Alpha and Omega Survival School. Today we're going to take a look at some recent events that have taken place, and we're going to talk about some possible future events coming up, and we're going to do a little bit of reading today. I promise it's not going to be too boring, so stick around. Alright guys, so basically uh, I want to go ahead and just apologize for my lack of posting over the last month or so. Um, just could never f find a way to fit it in. And and there were actually a few days where I was really uh, on fire and wanted to do a video, but I was afraid that I would misspeak or maybe overreact to some of the things that have been going on. And I really wanted to give it some time, just so I would not be speaking from emotion rather than from the facts and actually what's been going on. And it's been tough, but I wanted to give it enough time. I think I gave it a little too much time, but I tried to jot down the main points that I wanted to go over. Um, but a lot of the things recently have really been... Uh, ticking me off. They really have been. And, uh, of course, we all know about the, was it the LBGT ruling. Uh, so, I want to go today, and I want to look at some things in the Bible. I've got my Bible here. And, I just want to, I just want to pull out a few things. So, that being said, let's get into it. Now, first of all, I'd like to start by saying the perception of reality has been skewed. Extremely skewed. Um, you know, we look at things today uh, for like just like, like the LGBT uh, ruling. We look at that, when I say we, I mean the people of the United States, not me or maybe not you. But the people of the United States look at this as, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, it's oh, it's whatever, you know. And then, of course, there's the few that belong to that group, or the many now, I guess, that belong to that group um, that think it's the right thing. And they're very supportive of it. And I know a lot of people even that aren't part of that group that are very supportive of it. And... You know, I went through my Facebook and I took out quite a few people, you know, friends even, that support that. I'm not going to, you know, associate a whole lot with people that support that. Uh, anyways, so moving on, uh, I'm going to pull out some verses here. Uh, and and talk about it as we go, I think. So, I'm going to start out in Genesis. This is chapter 2, verses 22 through 24. So I'll read it first, and then I'll, then I'll talk. Okay. 23 through 24. <clears throat> then the Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman, and brought her to the man. And the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman, for she was taken from man. This is why, and pay attention to this, this is the key, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife, and they become one flesh. That's the key verse there, okay? So, <clears throat> The Supreme Court changed a definition that they didn't write in the first place. Now, it may just be me, uh, but God says it. That settles it. 
marriage is between one man and one woman. Now, I've had plenty of people, I've heard plenty of people say, man invented marriage. And therefore, man can rewrite the books on marriage. That one verse, verse 24, is marriage. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife. And they become one flesh. That is marriage. Okay? So, maybe in the New World concept of a ceremony and, and bonding and, and all that, even that goes way, way back beyond before even we would want to think about. So, right there, that proves all of those people wrong. Okay? Marriage is holy. Marriage is from God between a man and a woman. Okay? I'm not going to go too much more into that. Obviously, you see my stance on this subject. So, therefore, like I said, Supreme Court changed a definition that they didn't write. And they don't own the rights to change it. So, therefore, you could say that their law that they made is invalid. In fact, man's law is all invalid if it goes against God's law. Okay? Understand that. <clears throat> Alright, so... Uh, if you're still here, then we're going to move up to uh, Leviticus chapter 18. We're going to go and we're going to read 22, 24, and 25. Okay. This is continuing along the, the marriage, uh, the marriage topic. Okay. Leviticus 18, 22, 24, and 25. Verse 22. You are not to sleep with a man as with a woman. It is detestable. Skipping down to verse 24. Because verse 23 has to do with animals. 24. Do not defile yourself by any of these practices, for the nations I am driving out before you have defiled themselves by all these things. And verse 25, the land has become defiled, so I am punishing it for its sin, and the land will vomit out its inhabitants. I think that's very key. You see that <clears throat> it talks about the land, God talks about that he is punishing the land for its sin. Does that sound familiar to any of you? I would say that America is indeed being punished. For a long, long time, this country went without being attacked internally. And it went without being uh, hated. And now were attacked internally almost on a daily basis by people who are against Christians and the government and whoever can make it out to seem you know, and say whatever they want they can say oh it, it wasn't against Christians it was against whatever but when it comes down to it the reason for the attacks were because we are known to the other nations as a Christian nation so, there it is again. Verse 22, you are not to sleep with a man as with a woman. It is detestable. Okay? Now, um, I really, really need not go any further on the subject. It says it right there. Like I said, if God says it, that settles it. Um, so, there again, proves everybody wrong. Well, of course, like I said... We're all the, the perception of reality is very skewed. And it's amazing how perception can affect the way you think about things. I'm going to leave that subject. I think we've uh, done enough there, at least for right now, to give you a picture of 
it's it's black and white it really is it's it's one or the other there is no middle ground there is no gray area okay um now there are people out there who are uh, LGBT and also claim to be Christians. Well, I also believe that if you have asked Christ to be your savior and you meant it, that you are indeed going to go to heaven no matter what because nothing can take you out of his grasp. Okay? So, but we are also called to live Christ-like. That's what Christian means, Christ-like. Okay? And that lifestyle does not support Christianity. So, that being said, let's move on. So, I'm going to I'm going to talk now about choosing your faith and of course, as crazy as it seems with the modern uh, perception, choosing your faith over friends and family. And I truly believe it's becoming time for such measures to be taken, um, especially if friends or family are removing you from the path of righteousness and the path to God. Now, before I start, I want you to be sure that you understand that I'm not saying to pack up and leave and never talk to anyone again in your family if they're not agreeing with you, Okay. I am very family oriented and I believe that everyone should treat their family as their family and as good as possible because no one else is going to. They're your family, okay? And they're your friends. Nobody else is going to treat them the same way. All right? So with that being said, uh even I have gone through some recent tribulations with friends and even a couple family members, distant family members uh, that, you know, were pushing my buttons, really. You know, making fun of Christianity, making fun of the religion, and basically saying that you're wrong and you need to change your ideas. Now, of course, I'm blessed with a stubborn personality, and so it's easier for me to say, get away from me than it is for a lot of people but um, so anyways let's 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 look at uh, Matthew 10 verses 32 through 39 and it's it's not easy guys you know uh, but when we're talking about this we're talking about our eternity we're talking about eternity with Christ and what's more important to choose a family member who you have limited time with anyways because we're mortal we're on earth so obviously everyone dies would you rather choose them and then lose them and then lose eternity with Jesus okay or you can choose Jesus still talk to them and try and help them see the truth and, you know, if they choose otherwise, that's on them, not on you. And you are rewarded with spreading the word, okay, because we're all called to, all right? So really think about, uh, just, just really think hard about what's important to you, okay? Because me, I'd rather have eternity than the few years we have here and then eternity uh separate from God okay so let's look at Matthew 10 32 39 and the first couple verses are key here okay very key and if you have any doubt to your, to the religion to to Christian faith um if you have okay so let's say for a minute that you know, you you go to church and you act a certain way, but then when someone asks you if you're a Christian, you or you know around your friends, you say, "Oh no." Okay. I really want you to pay attention to these first couple verses. Okay. 
All right, so, <clears throat> verse 32. Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. This is Jesus talking. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Okay. So, if there's any doubt... You need to, to really think hard about this because it's not just as simple as going to church and being a good person. A lot of people think that. And they're the ones who I said earlier claim to be Christian. They think they can be a good person and, and do good works and get in on that. And that is not how... Uh, that Jesus says that's not how it works, you know? Um... We are judged on our acceptance of him and then our works, okay? Revelation talks about the great white throne judgment. And those who, whose names are not in the book of life, meaning those who have not accepted Christ as their Savior, are judged on their works, okay? They are judged on their works and not on their good works. They're judged... On the, for their sins. You know, there's two people that can pay for your sins. You or Jesus. If you accept Jesus, then he has paid for your sins. Of course, if you don't accept Jesus, you can pay for your sins and you'll spend eternity in hell. Um, and that's just it. That's There it is. There, there's black or white. There's no gray. There's no purgatory. There's no any anything like that. Okay? So, um, so that was 32 and 33. I really want you to think about that. That was Matthew 10, 32 and 33 if you want to if you want to jot that down and re and really think about that. That's two very very important verses in this passage. Okay. Moving on. Uh verse 34. Don't assume that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. So that was 36. 37. The person who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The person who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever doesn't take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone finding his life will lose it. And anyone losing his life because of me will find it. That's a very powerful passage, okay? And it speaks right to the topic that I wanted that I wanted to go over, okay? This faith, the only true faith, requires we we belong to God. We are His creation. We are to serve and love Him. In all that we do, in all that we are, uh, the Bible says, with all our strength, with all our soul, with all our minds, um, and and the, and that this is where it gets tough because truly it will come to this in in the end in the end days and even now a lot of times like I said I've had experience with this <clears throat> it turns family members against each other. And we have to deal with that. We can't escape that, okay? You have to choose one or the other, okay? And <clears throat> it's hard for me to, to find a way to talk about this to where it's not just blatant, but I guess I have to, you know? You either choose Christ or you lose, you're on the losing side if you don't choose Christ. That's just how it is. That's how it's going to be. Okay? Um, that is, in the Word of God, that is how it works. Okay? Um, there is no living like you want to and then sliding in. A deathbed confession and a deathbed plea is... Trust me, that's not how you want to go into eternity, all right? So, upcoming, and I believe that we are heading towards the end, 
Um, I mean, there's so much that that points to current events and biblical prophecy. There's so much. Um, but before I get into that, um, so I want you guys to realize that there may be there may be a time very soon where you're gonna you're gonna have to choose Christ or possibly the law or the the relationship with a family member. And I ask again, what would you rather have? Eternity with Christ or a couple years with the family member? And I say a couple years, it could be 50 years. But in comparison with eternity, you're looking at only a couple years. Um, so there it is again. It's black and white. Jesus says, the person who loves father or mother, son or daughter, more than me is not worthy of me. Christ is first. Okay? He's up here. Okay? And everything else follows. And if you don't like that, or you disagree with that, that's between you and God. But that's straight from God's mouth. Okay? That's right in His Word, and you can't dispute it. You know, talk to God about it. But I guarantee you that your heart either will be hardened or you will change your mind and you will choose choose him and and I would push all of you to choose him and no matter what uh, we're we're reaching a point in in history and I say a point in history because it's already written in the grand scheme of things uh you know we see the end times prophesied in revelation okay that will come true Okay, it's not that, well, that might come true. It's a predict, like Nostradamus stuff, you know. They always talk about stuff of his that came true, but they don't talk about the hundreds and hundreds of things that didn't come true. All right, this will come true. All of it has, all of it will. That's why I say it's history, even though it hasn't happened yet. You got it? So, <clears throat> that stuff will happen. No matter what. Doesn't matter who does it. Doesn't matter the people that are a part of it. It's going to happen. So, with that, I want to do one more verse before I get into the more uh, the, the next topic. And this basically sums up uh, this part, anyways. This is probably one of my favorite verses. And it just it basically backs up what I just said there. I always make sure to have a verse behind what I say because, and I don't try and pull them out separate. I always make sure that the whole intention from Christ to God uh, is as I'm going to say it. I don't want to say something and have it mean something else. Anyways, alright, so this is Joshua 24, 14 and 15. Um, so... Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. 14. Therefore, fear the Lord and worship him in sincerity and truth. Get rid of the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and worship the Lord. But if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, choose for yourselves today the one you will worship, the gods your fathers worshipped beyond the Euphrates River, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. As for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. <clears throat> so, uh, there, um, okay, so we're going to relate that to today. So the gods that, that the ancestors or others are worshiping, the fake gods, the, the, make-believe gods that they are worshiping okay that can be today you look at people who basically worship money or uh, or or worship uh, cars and, and and worship I don't mean bow down you know you think of worship as bowing down I mean they put it first because people put money up here they put cars up here they put sports up here they put everything up here 
and then they put God in a box under the bed. Okay, um, and it also, of course, means the other gods like you know Islam's God and uh, the Greek gods and the Roman gods and and all the gods that you could possibly think of. Okay, those are the gods that the lowercase g. All right. And then the last part of that verse, of, of verse uh, 15, as for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. Okay? So, choose for yourselves today. I love that part as well. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. That's why we thank the Lord for this day when we pray. We thank the Lord for today. We thank the Lord for this day. Because right now is the only moment that truly exists. Right now. There's no past. There's no future. Okay? So, that being said, today, choose for yourselves whom you will serve. So, uh, so that's basically it there. Um, now, there are some, you know, some more futuristic things here that I would like to talk about. And, they're, and to be honest with you, they're not really futuristic anymore. They're happening today in the world, which, is, which leads me to believe that now more than ever we are living in the end times. And, of course, people think about the end times as, uh, you know, a cataclysm of fire raining down and and all this extreme stuff but when you look at the progression of the end times we don't see that you do see you know wars right at the end and this is this is I'm talking about right at the end you know but really you look at it and you see overwhelming peace right before uh, all of the bad stuff actually starts happening. Um, and that's Antichrist's way of, you know, fooling us. So the Antichrist is, you know, will come and deceive the nations at the end. And, excuse me. Uh, so, anyways, I don't want get, to get too far ahead of myself, but... Um, Alright, so... What is the future like for Christians? And I mean true Christians. Christians who believe that Christ, uh, who, who believe 100% of this, that Christ died, rose again, and paid for our sins. And we have accepted that. True Christians. Okay. What's the future? What's our future um, upcoming? And, and I do, I personally believe in the rapture. Uh, I know there are some that do not. Uh, I do not know when the rapture is. Obviously, the Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour. Only the Father knows. Okay? So, we can't. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to make predictions. All right? We're already looking at persecution of the Christian faith of Christians around the world. Even in America, um, the government... And, and all these laws they're passing are just ways leading up to the persecution of Christians. We see it every day more and more and more. Um, let's see. This is John 15, 18 through 27. We've been persecuted. We've had beheadings overseas. Uh, we've had uh, constant... Persecution in the United States as well, and people don't really see it that way. It goes back to the perception of it. So, uh, an example uh, with the laws being passed, um, with the LGBT and all that being passed, okay, disguised as a win for that community. Uh, when you get down to it. Uh, it's leading up to the ability to persecute Christians. Why? Because true Christian churches will stand up to 
the law being passed saying that all churches have to acknowledge the law and uh, perform marriage ceremonies for LGBT couples and now obviously it's against the Christian faith and I would say probably 50% of the churches in America are true Christian churches that will not, absolutely will not, follow that. They will say, no, we're not marrying any of these couples, no matter what the law is. And, there you see it, then that is a way, because these people know this, okay? Satan is at work in this world, y'all, okay? He is, whether you want to believe it or not. And these are ways that he is building up to the final persecution of Christians. Okay, so so we say no, we're not going to do this, and then they can say, well, we're going to shut down your church, or we're going to fine you, or we're going to sue you until you have to close down. Guess what happens? The, that fifty percent of the true Christian churches is down is is closed down. That's it. You know, that's what it leads up to. People look at it as. Uh, persecution against the LGBT community. Excuse me. But when you really, really look at it, it's just an open door for them to come in and persecute Christians for the way we believe, or the, for what we think and what we believe. And uh, and I, we're, we're, we're going to see a lot more of that in the coming years. We're going to see a lot more of that. Um, and eventually it'll get to a point where it's obvious and no one's going to, you know, do anything about it. We've already let it come too far. So, that's that. Uh, let me read this, okay? Fifth, uh, John 15, 18 through 27. So, long passage, so stick with me. Okay. If the world hates you, and this is Jesus speaking, if the world hates you, Understand that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Remember the world... I'm sorry. Remember the word I spoke to you. A slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they don't know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sin. Now they have no excuse for their sin. The one who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done the works among them that no one else has done, they would not have sinned. Now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But this happened so that the statement written in their law might be fulfilled. They hated me for no reason. That's from Psalm 69, 4, that last part. That was the uh, prophecy fulfilled. Okay, so it's talking about Christian persecution. Okay. So we have to remember that these actions against the Christians, okay, against the beheadings in, in overseas and all these laws being passed that push Christians aside, it's not only hate against us, it's also hate against God. He says those who hate us hated him first, okay? So there will be persecutions, and they will progressively get worse and worse and worse and worse until uh, it'll be so obvious to us, and the rest of the world will just turn turn away and and ignore it. And that's the 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 sour, the bitter, sour truth that we're facing in today's world. We're already, you know, they, they've already taken. God out of the schools and out of the courts and, and uh, 
and they 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 tried to take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, and now they've removed God from the sacred ceremony of marriage. So that's where we're at today, guys. You know, if you haven't really sat down and thought about it much, you know, you really really ought to, and just pray and read and learn. Okay, that's what I've been really doing quite a bit is learning as much as possible and reading and and studying the the revelations and the prophetic books because the more and more you look at it, the more and more you see uh, everything's lining up. And it's scary, but it's also exciting at the same time because, well... I digress. Anyway, let's, uh, so, uh, I, I wanted to talk about, uh, the Bible prophecy, Revelation, uh, talks about it. Uh, we've seen already beheadings. I mentioned the beheadings a little bit before. Okay, so let's see if this verse rings a bell or, or uh, raises a flag or anything in any of you guys' minds. So this is Revelation 20, verse 4. Then I saw thrones and people seated on them who were given authority to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of God's word who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and who had not accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with the Messiah for a thousand years. Okay. The first part of that verse is what I really want you guys to focus on. The souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of God's word. We are already seeing this, guys. Okay? We're already seeing this. Those uh, Christians that were beheaded by uh, ISIS. I mean, I'm sure you saw the video or, or the videos that were, that were aired or you know, the small parts that were aired. We're already seeing this. Okay? And I fully believe that those Christians are going to be the first given the authority to judge in the thousand years. Okay? They were martyred. And, uh, I mean, we're seeing this. This is Revelation. We're watching Revelation happen. Okay, and it's scary, like I said, and it's also exciting. We're so close, and the majority of the world doesn't even realize it. Uh, with that being said, I know this has been a very, very long video. I hope you guys are still with me. All right, guys. Um, post, comment, like, subscribe. You know, I did... I uh, hope to receive a bunch of comments, and, and maybe I can answer some questions you guys have. Um, and, of course, I strive to learn as, as, as much as possible, too. So, if you have constructive, uh, any, any type of comment, make it constructive, please. Don't come up here and, and just go on and on about, you know, how... You think I'm wrong, and you think this, and you think that, and all this stuff, because I'll probably look at you and say, well, that's just like your opinion, man. If you ever seen The Big Lebowski, best quote ever. But that's probably what I'll say, and then I'll hit the delete button on your comment, and it'll be gone into the confines of the internet. So, that being said, I'm going to try and get back outdoors and do some videos again. Alright guys, this is Josh with Alpha Omega Survival School. Hoping you guys have a great day or a great night wherever you are. And I'll see you next time. See you guys.